Hey everyone, welcome back to Andrina's Creations. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to create these bag toppers. I'm going to be showing you how to create them for these cereal bags, but you can create them for any bags, with cellophane bags, with candy, anything of your choice. These are double-sided, and I'm going to show you how to customize them. You're going to see how simple it is, and these are great um, last-minute gift ideas right now, especially for St. Patrick's Day, if you're a last-minute person like me. All right, guys, so let's get started. For your supplies, all you're gonna need is the item that you want to put the topper in. Today, I'll be using the cereals. I got these from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to be using white cardstock to print my images. You can use any paper of your choice, but this is what I'm going to be using. You're going to need your printer, and if you have a cutting machine, and of course, the software of your choice. Open up your software. I'll be using Silhouette Studio Business Edition. Of course, you can use the Basic Edition. The Basic Edition is free. I'll leave all the links down below. I have a video on how to download Silhouette Studio. You do not need a cutting machine to use this software. You can either get uh, the Basic, the Designer, or the Business Edition, and you do not need a cutting machine. Now, for this tutorial, I am going to be using a cutting machine because of the way that I'm going to design the, the bag topper. But you can do a regular simple topper and you can cut it out by hand again i have silhouette business edition version 4.4 and the original price to upgrade to business edition is a hundred dollars but it's a one-time payment and i highly recommend it i'll also leave the link down below as well all right to get started you're going to get your images i am also affiliated with creative fabrica creative fabrica has a touch of digital paper and png images or and a lot more and then you can subscribe to them and become a member and you only pay one dollar a month um one dollar for the first month and then after that you're only going to pay 19 dollars if you click on the link down below you do not need to be a member to buy from them you can just easily buy one at a time but i highly recommend because you only pay 19 dollars a month and you have um everything available for you in here and it's tons and tons and thousands of images and digital paper and stuff from here all right anyways after uh, this is the ones that i'm going to use it came with 26 uh, vectors 30 high resolution pngs and 28 png so um gold so it has different ones so it has a 30 in gold and then 28 um, without gold so i get all this with my membership but again you can just purchase it one by one you can just purchase this one if this is the only one that you want to use all right enough with that then i'm gonna go back into silhouette after i downloaded and extracted the file i saved it into a sam patrick's folder then you have two different options on how to bring in your stuff into silhouette you can go to file merge or you can go to your quick access and then just drag it into silhouette okay so you could just drag your stuff in here and then after you drag everything that you want in here everything's going to be here your next step is that you need to size your document to the paper size that you are going to be using i am going to be using 8 by 11 cardstock so i need to put my size of paper to 8 by 11. you need to go to your icon on your right all your icons are over here if you do not know the names of your icons just put your mouse over your stuff and then wait to see that you see the name of the icons so i'm going to click on the first one that is the page setup and where it says media size i'm going to change it to 8 by 11 because I'm going to be using 8 by 11 paper now remember I'm gonna teach you how to do a bag topper now you're gonna do this with any bag of your choice today I'm going to be doing the cereal bag topper so it's up to you to uh, measure the bag that you're going to be using okay and then those are the measurements that you're going to enter I also I always like to go a little bit bigger uh, on the width on the bag so this bag is going to be six inches so I'm going to be doing it 6.25 you're gonna come here on your left and you're gonna go on your shapes and you're gonna click on the rectangle make any size rectangle of your choice here on your screen and while it's still selected I'm gonna go here to my width and I'm gonna type 6.25 25. now remember you can use any size of your choice there is no right or wrong on the measurements you you just need to go based on your bag now again my bag is around six inches but i'm just going to go slightly bigger i'm going to do a 6.25 now on my height i'm going to use 1.5 again you choose whatever you want now i'm going to start designing this and then i'm going to show you something else so just follow along so you don't get confused okay so this is the rectangle that i did 6.25 by 1.25 i want to add a background to here okay but before that let me start putting the rainbow 
so i want my rainbow and now i have all my images already sized so um this video doesn't become so long so i brought all in my images and these are already sized to what i want them to be but you need to size them how do you size your images you just going to click on your image and then right here on the corner you're gonna go up and down and size them to the size that you want okay now i want my rainbow here and start putting your images where you want if you see that your stuff is like in the back and in the front so just bring right click and bring to the front right click and bring to the front that's all you have to do okay and start putting them where you want them All right, before I continue, because I don't want anyone getting confused, I'm going to bring in that rainbow one more time in here because the rainbow actually didn't come in like this. Okay, so this is how the rainbow looks. So all I did was, because again, I have version 4.4, all my PNG images automatically gets traced when I bring it into Silhouette for me all i have to do is go ahead and grab the eraser tool from my right and i'm gonna bring down the size of my eraser and i'm just gonna erase one dot from here once rainbow to the side all them pieces are left behind so all i'm gonna do is delete all that because i don't want that and i have more over here make sure that you delete everything and then i'm going to zoom in okay so the zoom in and the zoom out button is up here in the magnifying glass so you can zoom in and you can zoom out so i'm going to zoom in and i want to erase those right here so i'm going to go back to my eraser tool and bring down the size and just erase that part i mean do it better i'm just trying to rush here for the tutorial and also that part over there and you can always undo if you don't like it okay um you know erase the parts that you don't like and then that's how my rainbow looks now i erase that on top okay And then I want this background in here. So I'm just going to right click and send to the back and okay. You have, excuse me, you have different options. You can either click on your rectangle, go here on your, um, left you have a dropper only business edition has this dropper here on the left and then i'm going to click on my background and you see that it came in here i'm going to go to my fill icon that looks like a paint palette click on the third option and then click on advanced option and then once it's aspect ratio i'm going to click on that and that's one way that you can put the background in there if you don't have a business edition then you can either click on your um digital pattern and extend your pattern to make it bigger send it to the back so you can see it click on your digital paper hold down your shift key click on your rectangle go to your modify panel that looks like a rectangle in a circle and click on crop all right so those are your two options now i want i do want to put this a little bit smaller so where my while my rectangle is selected i am going to go ahead and click on my fill icon that looks like a paint palette click on the third option Click on advanced option and where it says scale, I'm going to scale that down. All right. And then while my um, rectangle is still selected, I'm going to go to my offset icon that looks like a double star. I'm going to click on internal offset and I'm going to color that white. And then I'm going to click on my outline color and click on no color. 
so I'm left like this this is how everything's looking so far right all right now you're gonna type how do you type you're gonna click on the a on your left a on your right you're going to select the font that you want to use and then you're going to click on your screen and start typing unselect it to get off the edit mode and then click on it again i'm going to center it i'm going to go to my fill icon and just color it if you wanted to match one of the colors that you already have here click on your dropper and then you're going to match it okay so i want it to be that green let me come over here i'm going to remove that outline color and then go ahead and select a font that you would like to use and add your font wherever you want it at. And... Okay, so with the word Lucky Charm, I want to put a different color on each letter. So make sure that you have the selected font that you want to do this with. You cannot ungroup it and then change the font. You need to make sure that you have the font that you really want. Then I'm going to right click and ungroup it. And now all my letters are separate. So then I'm going to go ahead and click on one letter, go to my fill icon, and then I'm going to start coloring them in. Then I'm going to select the word lucky, group it, and I am going to go change the outline color to none. Select the word charm, take the outline color off, and I'm going to select them both. I don't have them grouped yet. All right, now when you like how everything looks, your next step is follow these exact steps and it's gonna come out correctly. You're going to click here on your mouse, you're gonna drag it and you're going to select everything, right click and group everything together, okay? Right click it and group it. After that, right click and copy, okay? After you right click and copy, now it's automatically copied into your clipboard, okay? Now you're going to right click and weld this together. It might look kind of funny, but just go ahead and I'm going to color everything green. So now everything is welded into one shape, okay? But don't move it. Everything's welded into one shape. Now right click and paste in front. The reason why I did all that is because when you go cut it it's gonna want to cut everything out so remember you have another thing in the back so i'm going to select everything i'm going to click on no cut and then i'm just going to click on the part in the front and click on sorry uh before i do all that let me click on here send and then only on that shape click on cut so only that shape there is cut let me undo so i can go back to what before i moved it there you go so if i go back to the send tab oh it didn't do it hold on let me send this to the back real quick now let me go here click on that one and click on cut all right send this one to the back and that was like this all right so i'm going to select them both right 
and I'm gonna go here to my replicate icon. It says replicate. And right here where it says mirror, I'm going to mirror this up. Okay, so it says down, up, to the side, and stuff like that. So I'm gonna mirror this up. Let me select everything and move it down. Nothing's grouped yet, okay? All right. Now, I want these two touching a little bit. Remember, I don't have nothing grouped yet. So let me undo. Okay. Now, I'm going to select these two on the top. And I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. So they can be kind of touching. Not a lot. All right. Now, I'm going to send the image to the back. Send this one to the back. And you need to weld these two pieces together because if I go cut it out, the machine is going to want to cut right out that in the middle and you can't have that. So I'm going to click on this one, hold my shift key, click on this one, right click and weld. So now it's all one shape and I'm going to click on it and send it to the back. All right. Now I'm going to select everything, right click and group it together and let me remove that outline all right and this is how it's looking now if you want to cut this out by hand you can go ahead and do so if you don't have a cutting machine you're just gonna have to cut around the images and then cut out in between the um rainbow okay but i gonna use my cutting machine so what i had to do is i'm gonna go here on my page setup is the first icon on my third option i'm going to turn on my registration marks where it says thickness i'm gonna go all the way up and then i'm gonna turn on my print bleed you don't have to always turn on your print bleed but sometimes if the machine messes up your print and cut then um, you'll still have a little bit of ink on the side, if that makes sense. I have a whole tutorial on how to do print and cuts. All right, depending on the size of topper that you did, only one or two or three could fit. It depends on how many you're adding. When you're doing a print and cut, everything should stay inside of your red rectangle. Everything that's outside of your red rectangle, you're going to have to manually cut that out by hand. Right here, um, it looks like I could only add one because the second one is not going to fit. But this is not always going to happen like that. It depends, again, on the size that you are making. Again, you first need to print this out. So you need to go to your printer icon. Select the printer that you have. I have an EcoTank 16600. I'm going to click on preferences. I'm going to click on how I'm going to uh, print it. I'm going to use paper cassette one and the document size eight by 11. Remember your document size should always be matching on what you put over here, media size. On my media size, remember I put eight by 11 paper. I'm also going to put it here, document size eight by 11. Um, portrait mode, I like to print on premium presentation paper matte. And then I'm going to click on okay. And then I'm going to print. After I print, I'm going to load this up to my machine the car stock and then I'm going to go to my send tab and then the um, settings that I like to use is blade of six force of 26 or 27 and speed of four and two passes because I'm using a hundred pound car stock. These are the settings I like, to, I like to use. If you don't like these settings, just feel free to go ahead and play around with your settings. And then once you have your settings and your paper on your mat, you're gonna click send on to cut. But again, if you don't have a cutting machine at home, you do not need to turn on your registration mark. You're just going to print and cut it out by hand. All right. Now, remember, if you are doing a print and cut, you can now move this to the side or try to do any adjustments after it printed. Once it's printed, you can no longer move the image. All right. Once I print, I'm going to come right back.
I forgot to tell you guys in the video that before printing, make sure that the top uh, uh, words, you make sure you flip horizontally because once you fold it, it's going to be backwards. So before printing, do not forget to change your words. Flip them horizontally, the top one. Only the words, not the images, just the words. So just click on your words and the, um, right click and flip horizontal. Right, and then you're just gonna fold in half. Now you're going to use double-sided tape or staples. I personally don't like to see the staples, so I'm just gonna use double-sided tape. Okay, everyone, here's how that turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick tutorial. If you did, don't forget to comment down below, blue heart. Also, if you're here for the first time, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notified every time I upload new videos. Don't forget to join my Facebook craft group. It's called Andrina's Creations Crafting Lounge. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, everywhere. All right, guys, I hope everyone's having a blessed day, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.